down in a faint in front of Juggernaut. So I remember what the charges uh, brother-in-law, the very uh, great lover of Lord Chaitanya, he was so excited that Lord Chaitanya was coming to Puri. And then this happened, he thought, oh no, it's going to ruin everything. But so I remember what the charges, he fell in love with Lord Chaitanya, like, just, he took him under his wing. Young Sanyasi, let me teach you about Vedanta, you're too soft and you're too whimsical. Let me teach you about Vedanta. So for seven days, he sat Lord Chaitanya down and he lectured him and he lectured him and he lectured him. And Lord Chaitanya was just sitting attentively, sitting straight and tall, carefully listening to every word Sadhguru Mahaprabhu tried to say. And he didn't say a single thing for seven days. Mm. Mm. Nothing, nothing. Finally, after seven days, he says, Listen, do you understand anything that I'm telling you? I've been speaking for a long time, you haven't asked a single question, you don't understand anything. And Lord Chaitanya said, he said, oh, he said, are you understanding Vedanta? And Lord Chaitanya said, Vedanta is very clear. Vedanta is like the sun shining in the sky, giving light to everyone. But your explanations of Vedanta are like a cloud that is covering the natural glow of the sun. And that's what the charge is like. I mean, imagine for seven days, your guest sat, eating your prasad, hearing your lecture for seven days, and then you ask him, what do you think? And he says that. He was just like, and then, then Mahaprabhu, Mahaprabhu proceeded to go through everything that he had said, and by memory he remembered all of the verses, all the things that he said, and he said, this is a discrepancy, that is a discrepancy, this philosophy is not correct, that's what, what you will hold that concern about what the charge of the mind was just completely blown. He was an incredibly famous scholar in his day. So then, the day after, Lord Chaitanya began to give him instruction, and eventually he showed his form of Sadhguja. Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, everything in his life was smashed. He had reached the pinnacle of what he had wanted to achieve in his life. He was the guru of the, of the king of Arisa, the last major Hindu dynasty in North India. Okay, this is a serious, historically a serious deal. And he's the king, the, the king, the guru's, the king's guru. Mouth. And so, but the charge is like, you know, he was just 
Spirit made him with children. He hadn't brushed his teeth even. He hadn't bathed, he hadn't brushed, he hadn't done anything. And the servants are watching, and like, what's going to happen? And he just opened his mouth, mouth, put it beside him. Basically, just let go of all of these external considerations and just take the mercy of the Lord. So this poetry is written by Sarah Bhagavad Gita Charya. We can know at least a few things. One is that this is the most excellent Sanskrit poetry that uh, can be written. Sarah Bhagavad Gita Charya is sometimes considered Prihaspati. But he's descending from Prihaspati to Chaitanya The other thing we can know is that this was written by someone who had first-hand experience with Lord Chaitanya Sai with his own eyes, felt his presence, his own physical presence. Also know that the poetry of Sarvabhumadacharya is filled with bhakti, transcending all other considerations.
realist, right? So, this friend of mine in DC, she's a wonderful Kirthania. Her name is Lakshmanamataji. She comes from the place of Mirabai. When she first met the Bodhi, she was like, why is everyone giving so much emphasis on 16 rounds? She said, I come from where Mirabai comes from, and Mirabai chanted all the time. So that was like her excuse. She's like, I don't do 16 rounds. Mirabai chants all the time. So I'm just going to try and chant all the time. So this is like her thing for years. And then when she met her Guru Maharaj, he said, how dare you even speak the name of Mirabai until you at least chant 16 rounds a day. Right? So completely change your mindset that if you can chant constantly, that it's easy to chant 16 rounds. What is the question of chanting 16 rounds? So there's so many stories of people like a Jewish guy in a, in a, in a concentration camp and the, and the Nazi chief says to him, you know, if you agree not to follow your tradition, then I'll set you free or whatever. He's like, no, I'll die as a Jewish person then, you know, right? There's so many people. And, and these things are external things, right? Where the people of America, I'm going to die, like, you know, going out and serving for your country. But, oh, we to die. But how many of us feel that way about the holy name? I know I don't feel that way about the holy name. So when Dr. Mantaku says that, then it's a meditation. How can I build my life in such a way that I don't use the excuse of nearby and say, oh, I chat all the time, you know? Right? Like, how can I switch my life around so that actually I believe that there's nothing of value in the 14 world except the holy name, and then everything else comes second to that.
Thank you.